We're talking Blue Raider football. Live from the Boulevard Bar and Grill, it's Rich Stockstill Live. One hour of football conversation with the head coach of the Blue Raiders. Be a part of the show on Twitter using the hashtag AskStock. Tonight's show is presented by Ascend Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Bud Light, it's for the fans. And Ascension St. Thomas, official hospital partner of MTSU. Now with head coach Rick Stockstill, here's the voice of the Blue Raiders, Chip Walters. Let's go! Glad to have you in here with us tonight at the Boulevard on the corner of East Main and Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Activity in here tonight. There's Monday Night Football on the screens. We're talking Blue Raider football until 8 o'clock tonight and coming up this weekend. This is going to be a busy corner on Saturday morning when the uh, homecoming parade makes a turn uh, off of East Main up along Middle Tennessee Boulevard when it gets underway at 10 a.m. Big homecoming weekend coming up and Coach is here, and uh, we are into the grind of the conference season, and Middle Tennessee made a trip to Birmingham to take on a really good UAB team, and that was not a a secret before you went down there. Uh, But uh, UAB gets the win on Saturday in what was, uh, as expected, a hard-fought contest. Yeah, Chip, um, you know, just we didn't start out the way we had envisioned it, and again, we dug ourselves in a hole, you know, pretty quick. And uh, we gave up too many explosive plays there early and just never formed, a, you know, any consistency on offense uh, that we maintained throughout the game. So disappointing, uh, you know, just just it, we just didn't play, you know, good enough to beat a team of their caliber. So uh, go back yesterday and practice, had a really good practice yesterday and excited to get back out there tomorrow and get ready for this one. Yep, that'll be coming up on Saturday at 2.30. As Western Kentucky will be coming in, we'll be uh, talking about the Hilltoppers uh, a little more in the second half of the show. Uh, Randy Lee will join us at the bottom of the hour to give us an update on uh, what's going on with them. Uh, And again, uh, we'll try to give you the the full homecoming schedule here in the second half hour as well. But um, one of the things you mentioned on the postgame show uh, the other day after uh, after the game is you talked about that that. Uh, that opening uh, drive that, that UAB had. And, you know, when when you get in that situation where they score, you don't score, and all of a sudden they're right back, you know, it's tough when you're having to play catch-up all day. Yeah, you know, just disappointed how we started. You know, they hit the 40-yard play on the first play of the game, and, you know, they score three plays later. And, you know, so now you're down, you know, 13 minutes left in the in the first quarter, and you're already down. So uh, then we did, you know, we, we came out and, you know, weren't able to, to match their score. And, you know, they come back down, score again. They scored every time, you know, they touched the ball the first half. And it's, you know, kind of you don't want to say, you know, demoralizing, but it's, de- it's deflating, you know, when, you know, when you feel like you have to, you know, score every time you touch the ball and you got to get a stop, and we never got one. And just uh, it was just a very frustrating, you know, start to that game yesterday or Saturday. Did it surprise you at all that uh, they came out and, and threw the ball as much as they did early? Or after scouting yourself after the UTSA game, that you had an expectation that they might try to go upstairs a little bit more? I mean, you know, again, they didn't stray far from their identity. You know, uh, the thing that they did, you know, they obviously they came out on the first play and went deep. And, you know, they did a lot of max protection. You know, they kept, you know, seven, eight guys in and sent out, you know, sent out two or three guys and, uh, you know, bought him some time and, and, and their receivers got behind. They got a, they got a couple of really good receivers, but – you know, I don't think I was in total shock or surprised by what they did uh, because, you know, we opened up that can of worms uh, the week before against San Antonio. So, uh, you know, we, we've, uh, 
we've been exposed a little bit, and uh, we've got to get that corrected. Yeah, you, you, that was a word you used on the postgame show the other day was that it, it we did get exposed. And, and, and in college football, there are no secrets uh, when, when somebody's having an issue or when somebody on the flip side is doing a great job, everybody's going to know about it. Yeah, I mean, that's – especially this – you know, you're in your fifth and sixth game of the year. You know, it's – you know, they, they've got a pretty good beat on – you know, you've got a pretty good beat on what, what you're going to face, what you're going to see unless, you know, teams get beat up with injuries or whatnot. But, uh, you know, after after five or six games, there, there's enough tape out there now that, you know, people – you know they can they can find out where you're strong, where you're weak, and and try to attack those those areas. Yeah, and they're, going into the game, you knew their running game was as good as anybody in the league. And Dwayne McBride went into the game averaging 6.9 yards per carry. We've seen Jermaine Brown before. Uh, they both ended up with with uh, just over a hundred yards. How difficult are those two guys, and 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 how different? In your mind, are, are were their styles of how they ran the football? Uh, you know, they they both have really good vision. They both set up their blocks really well. They run behind, uh, you know, their line really well, and then they're very, you know, both very explosive through the hole. the The big thing is they just kept us off balance, you know, with the pass. Uh, you know, it made it. You know, they they made it where we had to. You know, we were so cognizant of, you know, keeping the ball in front of us that, you know, we weren't as able to, we weren't able to be as aggressive up front as we would like to be in the run game. And, uh, you know, because of, you know, what, what they did, you know, throwing the ball. So I think the big thing, Chip, is they're both very similar, uh, both really good backs, and they're both physical runners. You talked about Max Protect and, and kind of give us – some football 101 there when when you look at the math of guys that are blocking and guys that are trying to rush what does how does that t- tell give folks an idea how that affects what you are able to do and what you're able to try to do well you know most teams try to get out you know three four sometimes five uh receivers on, on a passing play and in but, that case, you would have five linemen and a quarterback, and you'd have five receivers out in the pattern. Correct. Okay. And, and then, uh, you know, so what they were doing, you know, they had a tight end and a wing back. Sometimes it was a tight end, another back. Sometimes it was two tight ends. So they kept, obviously, their five linemen in. And then those two there, whether it's a tight end and a wing back or uh, two tight ends, you know, which equals seven, then the running back is eight. Uh, those guys weren't interested in getting out in, 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 in the passing, in the, in the pass concept. You know, so they stayed in blocked, and if a lineman got beat or something, there was somebody there to help on that. So it gives the quarterback more time. It was, it's hard to get to the quarterback when you max protect, and uh, eventually their receivers got behind us. Yeah, and, 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 you know, you guys had so much success early on with your with your defensive line that obviously people see that they're going to try to do something, and the way you do that is you keep more people in. Yeah, and that's what uh, you know. Right now, the uh, the strength of our defense is our front. It's been the strength of our defense, you know, this entire year. And uh, I think now, like like we talked a few minutes ago, I think after five or six games. You know, people see now that it's going to be hard to match up one-on-one, you know, with a Ferg or a Zalen or a Marley Cook or a Jordan Branch, those guys, you know, that they're bringing extra blockers into it, you know, to take advantage of some of the weaknesses that we have behind them. Yep, and on the back side, that if you choose to play man defense as opposed to zone, uh, there's, you know, those guys have to make a one-on-one play against – a really good receiver, like in this case, uh, Shropshire, who uh, who's big, tall, rangy, could run, and uh, and he made some big plays. Yeah, you know, made. I mean, he's a really talented guy. We knew that going in, though, so it wasn't a surprise uh, there. But you know, we just we just got to do a little bit better job. We got we got to get some confidence. We're we're not playing really confident 
football on the back end. And, you know, uh, they just need something good to happen. They need to make a play and uh, get some of that swagger, get some of that confidence back. Our opening drive tonight brought to you by the Murfreesboro Post, Rutherford County's local newspaper. Subscriptions to the Post are just $20 a year for 52 issues. Visit online at MurfreesboroPost.com today. More with Coach Rick Stockstill after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hey, Blue Raider fans, this is Coach Rick Stockstill. Have you heard about the MTSU debit card from Ascend Federal Credit Union? This card is exactly what you need for your busy lifestyle. Use it online and in stores. Purchases are automatically deducted from your Ascend checking account, and you can even add the card to your mobile wallet for ultimate convenience. Bank where the Blue Raiders belong. Ascend Federal Credit Union, exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Ascend is federally insured by NCUA. Visit us at ascend.org. Put Lee Company on your team and you'll always be ahead of the game with home maintenance, improvements, and repair. Sign up for a Lee Company home maintenance plan to have your heating and air conditioning system tuned up twice a year. In addition, you'll receive a comprehensive electrical and plumbing home inspection, plus member-only discounts and priority service, all for as low as $8.25 a month. For the very best electrical, heating, air conditioning, and plumbing services, call Lee Company at 615-867-1000 or visit LeeCompany.com. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance takes great pride in treating Middle Tennessee State University athletes, experts in bones, joints, and muscles, and with more than 60 specialists in locations across Middle Tennessee, TOA has a playbook to get you back in the game. To request an appointment, visit us at toa.com or give us a call at 855-NEED-TOA. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, or TOA, the official team doctors for Blue Raider Athletics. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Hey, Blue Raider fans. This is Dr. Mark Hardison with Middle Tennessee Oral and Implant Surgery. We are so proud to be able to serve the Blue Raider teams and their families when they need wisdom teeth removed, dental implants, or other specialty oral care. Our mission is to provide health care as it should be, providing compassion, availability, and excellence to every one of our patients. We deeply appreciate the support of your business as we join in supporting our team. Let's go Blue! Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. HF Blast commercial here. Maybe you're just graduating high school or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. The Blue Raiders on News Radio WGNS. Welcome back into the Boulevard for another segment with Coach Rick Stockstill tonight. Middle Tennessee and UAB uh, this past Saturday down at uh, at, at Protective Stadium uh, on Saturday. And uh, Coach, you talked about your secondary uh, not being able to play with the level of, or, or were not able to play, or did not play at the with the level of confidence that that they had in the past uh and and how do you reinstill that is that what you do you put them in good positions on the practice field during the week to to gain that back yeah i mean it, you, you try to do that but ultimately it's it's got to come in the game they gotta they gotta something's gotta happen good for them and you know you start getting that that confidence back no different and, you know you can hit home runs all you want in batting practice but until you do it in the game uh, that's when it that's when it happens. So, but they're good, competitive young men, and they'll continue to work. And they'll continue to get better, and and something good will happen for them down the road here. Yeah, the, the one one of the things that was different in this game, as compared to your your previous four games, is that you weren't able to get a turnover early or a defensive score, special team score, because you'd gone four games in a row and gotten in the end zone in a non traditional way. 
which uh, especially when you're playing on the road, if you can do that, man, that makes life a little easier for you. Yeah, but that's awful hard to do. I know it is. <laughs> and, and it's hard to expect that, but after you've yeah. done it for four straight weeks. Yeah, you get you get four in a season, you're beating your chest about that. But, uh, no, it's, uh, you know, we just didn't uh, – they did a good job. Give them credit. They did a good job of uh, protecting the ball. And, and uh, you know, we just uh, keep – some days you'll get them, some days you won't. But we just got to keep, you know, doing the things that we practice and – and uh, hopefully we can get a turnover or two this week. Yeah, they were giving up only about 17 points per game. They were number one in the league in rush defense, number one in in uh, in pass defense, and number one in overall defense. What is it about their makeup, their scheme, uh, their dudes that make them as good as they are defensively? I mean, uh, one, they've got really good players, and then two, you know, they just do, they do a good job of keeping the ball in front of you. In front of them, they've they've got to uh, you got to earn everything you get. There's not many not many free lunches out there, and uh, you gotta you gotta go get it, and uh, you know you gotta be very consistent. They make you drive the ball, and you know long period long number of plays, and you know you look at it, uh, you know the touchdowns that we gave up, you know four seven play drives and. Uh, when we made them go 8, 9, 10, 12, you know, it's now you're holding them to field goals or, you know, punting and, and uh, those sort of things. So the longer an offense has to stay on the field, the harder it is uh, to convert. And uh, they do a good job of making you stay on the field. And, you know, in, in like exactly what you mentioned there, and in, in here I look at a drive in the second half when you needed – some quick drives, fewer number, you know, some bigger plays, quicker scores. They were able to force you into a, a a drive of 13 plays, 75 yards, that kind of thing. That's a situation where you needed a five play, 75 yard drive that took a minute 20 off the clock. Yeah, man, it goes back, Chip. What I said, you know, they do a good job of uh, of eliminating or, or giving up those explosive plays and. Uh, they do a really good job of – they're good tacklers, uh, they're good players, and uh, they do a good job of, you know, keeping the ball in front of you. One of the guys on offense that we had not seen for, I guess, since week two of the season was Joe Irvin, who was back and appeared to be healthy and at full strength. He ended up being the leading rusher on the day with 54 net yards, but he kind of has a little bit of that wiggle that, that Jalen Lane has, and they give you – a couple of playmakers who have some real opportunities to make things happen. Yeah, Joe's a, he's a legitimate speed guy. He can run. He's not very big, uh, but he does have great speed, and he can he can help us. Obviously, you know, he's not in very good shape because he hadn't done anything in, you know, a couple months. Uh, but he got out there and, and, you know, was able to go to a couple plays in a row, and, you know, he'd tap out and come back in. But, you know, he, he's a guy that we need to – continue to, you know, uh, get him involved in the offense and, and as he gets in better condition and and uh, works his way back into football shape, then, uh, you know, he's going to be able to help us. And, and, and it seems like the uh, the use of – and being able to put Jalen Lane in as many opportunities that you can for him to get the football in his hands, whether it's offensively, special teams, are, are you happy with – that number of touches he's getting, or do you want to see more? No, you'd like to see more. I mean, it's uh, the the more he can, you know, touch the ball, the the better we're going to be. And uh, he he's such a such a competitive young man. Uh, everything he does is, you know, he 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 runs down and covers punts. He returns punts. He returns kickoffs. He catches balls. He blocks. He's such a he's such a great teammate. He's uh, he, he's a true definition of a warrior, a guy that just gives you everything he's got on every play. And the more he can touch it, the better off we'll be. Well, I tell you, we had him on the post game show uh, on Saturday, and it's not the first time, but just you're really impressed with the answers he gives you to questions to where he has such a feel for, you know, 
you know, in his mind, what this team needs, what it needs to do to get better and continue to have success. And, uh, and you know, and, and, and literally that's 10 minutes after coming off the field, probably played, what, 60 snaps on, on Saturday, something like that? 74. 74 is what he played. Well, I mean, and that to me, to be still as young as he is, it's very impressive uh, for him to be able to – formulate uh, his answers t- to those questions and and uh, and have such a feel that he does. Yeah, and Jalen's got a high football IQ. Uh, he's a really smart player. You know, he grew up in the coaching profession. His dad's a high school, very successful high, sp- high school coach there in South Carolina. Uh, so he's been a ball guy all his life. And, uh, you know, he understands and, and uh, just is a really, really cerebral you know, football player. I mean, he he he. And then when he doesn't time. overthink things, he he understands. Uh, you know, he, he's a natural. He's a really really good player. Yeah, he's one of those guys. If you if you're able to zero in and watch him and watch the little things he does, like from a punt return standpoint, he's not going to let that ball get by and those uh, in, invisible yards. Uh, get to you he's going to make the little plays along with the big plays of course but you're right his football IQ makes him something special yeah and I mean just I I told him the other day I mean just the little things of returning you know returning kicks he does such a great job of anticipating and catching the kickoff on the run And, and there's a study that you know the NFL did a couple years ago that if you catch a ball stationary you're going to lose the, that that gives the the coverage team four yards. By the time you get started, they've covered four yards. If you catch it on the run, now you have a four yard advantage, and that's what he does. He's like a center fielder in baseball, anticipating the throw to the plate, and uh, you know he catches the ball on the run. Yeah, does a really good job at the little things. Yeah, he has that momentum going forward on that. But, uh, yeah, Jalen Lane, he is, he is a guy that it's, it's really fun to watch him continue to develop. Need to take a break, but remind you, tonight's show brought to you in part by the Lee Company. Blue Raider fans get ahead of the game with the best home services team in town. For your heating, air conditioning, plumbing, electrical, and home improvement needs, Lee Company is the team to call 615-867-1000 or LeeCompany.com. More with Coach Rick Stockstill after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Every week, our Blue Raiders go the extra mile to make sure they're at their very peak. At Sunbelt Bakery, they do the same thing to make sure their granola bars are at their peak. Every week, Sunbelt Bakery brings new batches of granola bars from their bakery to your neighborhood. That's why Sunbelt Bakery's granola bars taste like they just baked them. Because they did. Try a Sunbelt Bakery granola bar today and taste the difference. Sunbelt Bakery. Bakery fresh taste. No preservatives. It's never lost on Window World that your home is your largest physical investment. Window World's integrity will be noticed from your very first moment of contact. A clean, professional installation of premium windows, siding, doors, and more are designed to last while leaving your home looking amazing. Window World and their lifetime warranty will always be there when it really matters. They're America's most trusted remodeler and proud partner of Middle Tennessee Athletics because the difference is integrity and always in the details. MT Dining is eating made easy. With more than 19 dining locations, you'll never run out of variety on campus. Whether it's Chick-fil-A, Steak and Shake, or Starbucks, we've got the brands you love right here. Need a quick snack or Scantron? Stop by one of the six pods on campus. And try out MT Dining's new farm-to-fork experience. Farmer's Market, now open. Located in the Student Union. Visit mtdining.com for more information. Or visit our office in the Keithley University Center. Room 202. Whether you go online or go in person, City Auto in Murfreesboro is where you go to see a gazillion cars and choose the one that's right for you. And there's no better time to go than now because we have a bigger, brand new facility. It's the easy, comfortable, convenient way to find what you're looking for. Remember, CityAuto.com is where you go to find your car online. And the all-new City Auto campus in Murfreesboro is where you go to see it in person. Go now, and we'll see you there. You buy something because you found it at a low price, and soon you realize it's no bargain because you really needed something better. It happens all the time, especially with car insurance. 
But the good news is you can get the right coverage at the right price. Just talk to me, State Farm Agent Bud Morris. I'll help you get the right coverage at a price that's right for you. Call me at 893-1417 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Bud Morris, providing insurance and financial services. Hey, Middle Chip Tennessee Last Commercial Electric here. proudly supports the Blue Raiders, and we're proud to power the scoreboard lights at Floyd Stadium. When it comes to the electric service in the community, you can always trust MTE to do what's best for our members. We serve by providing affordable, reliable, safe electricity and outstanding member services. Here at MTE, we serve to make life better for our members and their communities. Visit MTE.com to learn more. And about that scoreboard? Well, light it up, Blue Raiders. The Blue Raiders on News Radio WGNS, Murfreesboro, Smyrna. Welcome back into Rick Stockstill Live. Reminder that next Monday night there will be no show. We have uh, open date will be on the 22nd. So no show next Monday night. We'll resume uh, on the 24th uh, for that. But uh, here we are uh, halfway through the regular season. Six games in the books, six games uh, left to play. And uh, to kind of pick up uh, one, a few little scraps from, uh, from Saturday, uh, talk a little bit about your kicking game and where you think it is right now. Uh, first of all, from a, from a kickoff standpoint, I know you'd like to you get, you get, you get some good coverage, but also uh, you'd like to be able to get those through the end zone and not have to cover them. Yeah, well, that's, that's not going to happen um, on a consistent basis. Uh, Scotty, I think, has done a great job this year. You know, he's, uh, he's gotten a little bit better hang time on his kicks. His placement of the kicks have been a lot better for com- compared to a year ago. He's got a little bit more depth to it. Uh, but, you know, he's, uh, he's done a really nice job. Really proud of Scott and, and uh, how he's kicked off. And, you know, other than – you know, we've had a couple games, you know, the Miami game where, you know, they took one back and, you know, took another one back to midfield, you know. So, and we've had a couple others, but, you know, that it's part of it that's going to happen. And uh, But I, I've been very pleased for the most part with, you know, our coverage uh, units. Uh, other than the first game, uh, we've covered really well on, on our punt. Uh, We've done a really, really good job there, and you know our punt return unit has. Uh, you know we've we've blocked a kick, we've scored, and you know Jalen has, you know, done a nice job fielding punts, and you know probably averaging 10, 11 yards of return, you know, on the opportunities that he's gotten, and uh, so we've done a good job there, and you know kickoff return, uh, you know been been good, you know we've uh, fair caught most of them, and. You know, brought some of them out, you know, yesterday or Saturday against UAB. And, you know, so we're making good decisions there. And, uh, uh, you know, Zeke, six for six, hadn't had any really long field goals, but he's, he's been very consistent. He's six for six on field goals, and he's 100% on PATs. And, you know, so we've done a good job. Brody has snapped really well. Uh, and then, you know, Kyle is – you know, for the most part, has been very consistent this year. He had a wasn't wasn't so hot uh, San Antonio, but you know came back and rebounded like uh, like I thought he would. You know, so uh, been been pleased with our kicking game. I tell you, when he is right, he is a true weapon uh, from the punter position. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's got an explosive leg, and you know, just uh, you know, he, he's had a really really good career. You know, coming here and uh, has done a really nice job. Uh, he's a very athletic kid, and uh, you know we can do some different things with him as you guys watch and see that. You know, he's not just straight down the middle. We can move him around a little bit, and uh, to help our protection. So he's done a really nice job. Yeah, he has, and uh, he averaged over 50 yards per kick uh, on Saturday at UAB, and that is not the first time that that has happened this year. 
I want to remind you that whether you're tuned in to your game on the radio, watching on TV, or sitting in the stands, stay up to date with Blue Raider football with this year's football game day yearbook and digital game day guide at GoBlueRaiders.com or on the Blue Raider game day app. Coming up next, we'll have the uh, voice of the Hilltoppers, Randy Lee, our uh, Darius White, our producer. We'll be getting him on the phone, and we'll hear an update on the toppers after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. And they never heard from him again. Now that's scary. But listen to this one. It was a dark. Darius, let me know when night. you get him on the line. The man pulled into the convenience store parking lot. The lights Sounds good. I'm calling him now. As he crept toward the counter and saw the new Halloween jumbo box, but he left without buying one, missing his chance at seventy-five thousand dollars. <gasps> That's terrifying. I know, right? Scare up some fun this season with a new Halloween Jumbo Box. Only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Please play responsibly. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. You owe me five bucks. All right, you chip. Got him on the line. He's on hold. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Introducing new Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda Variety Pack. You hear that? It's seltzer with the pop of soda, all with zero sugar. Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, the loudest flavors ever. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, IRC Beers, St. Louis, Missouri. The MTSU Alumni Association is proud of its more than 130,000 living alumni who are leading, teaching, entertaining, researching, buying, farming, nursing, and more worldwide. Every Blue Raider accomplishment adds value to your degree. Are you connected to the MTSU National Alumni Association? Visit mtalumni.com to share what you're doing, update your information, and see how you can be involved and informed. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Murfreesboro Medical Clinic is proud to be the official medical group of MTSU Athletics. We all win big when we work as a team for better health. Just like MTSU's athletes and coaches, our healthcare professionals work tirelessly to make our community proud. At MMC, we really are true blue. MTSU is our hometown team, and your health is our mission. Visit mmclinic.com or call us at 615-893-4480. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company. For 82 years, Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name in heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 1-888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders. Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. Hi, we're chip last RJ break Young. Here. We offer technology solutions that power your business, school, hospital, church, law firm, and more. RJ Young will empower your office to be the modern office. That means an office that integrates technology as a business advantage, all to help you work smarter. From managed IT services, office equipment, and technology, business process outsourcing, and digital communications, we're proud to be your one stop for technology solutions that power your business. Come visit us at rjyoung.com. The Blue Raiders play here. News Radio WGNS. Welcome back to Rick Stocks to Live on this Monday night. And it's the Monday night of homecoming week as Middle Tennessee will host Western Kentucky in the 100-mile rivalry coming up Saturday at 2.30 uh, at Floyd Stadium. And longtime friend of the show as Randy Lee, the longtime voice of the Hilltoppers who has been terrific with us and uh, Randy how many years now have you been behind the mic at, at Western about half as many as you've been there uh, 2007 was my first year here okay, okay so, so 15, 15 years, years um, and, and always, always uh, glad, to, glad talk. to talk you're getting, you're ready, getting ready for, for uh, Coach, Coach Helton's Helton radio, radio show tonight, tonight. And, and I think, I think this, week this week we've, we've, got, we've got, two got two teams that are going to be coming in a little bit mad a little bit hungry uh, uh, trying to get back, to get back on the, the, the left-hand left side of the ledger. of the ledger. Yeah, I think so too, Chip. I think we're both sleeping in the same bed right now. I don't mean you and I. I don't want to <laughs> stir that rumor up again. Not again. Not but again. Uh, yeah, not again. <laughs> but uh, the, you know, the two teams are three and three, and uh, you know, both need a win. Um, not only uh, you know overall, but certainly the you guys want to stay alive in, in the conference race, and you know, the tops have to win to. You know, also stay alive, and they have a very difficult two games after MTSU, North Texas and UAB. So it's a tough stretch, and 
And, uh, you know, WK, you certainly played two very good teams the last two weeks, you know, seven point loss to Troy and they were driving at the end and fumbled at the Troy 30. And then a very good UTSA team, as you know, and down uh, three driving at the end and, and um, were stopped on downs at the uh, UTSA 34. So uh, they've been close. Uh, game one away at Indiana. Uh, that was one that probably should have won. Uh, Troy and UTSA are, uh, I think, a lot better football teams than Indiana. So the Indiana loss is really the one that I think stings them right now. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the, uh, the, the Troy game, take us back to that a little bit. You know, they've been known to be good defensively. What did they do? to slow down the Western offense? Well, they slowed down everyone this year. They uh, pressured, the, except the Appalachian State game, and they didn't have their best player play in that game. He was out with an injury. So they pressured the passer. You know, the WK's offensive line is one of the better ones in, the, in college football and pass protection, but they were able to get to the passer. Uh, they've got running back speed at every position on defense, except maybe tackle. Uh, the secondary is hard-hitting and fast. You know, I made a comment during the game, I, outside of maybe, you know, the SEC teams we played, I think it's the fastest defense that we've played against in my time here. Uh, I mean, so much speed. And uh, I thought when the game was over, I felt like maybe Troy was just a little bit better than WKU overall. And But it was a hard-fought game, and, you know, the Tops uh, had the ball driving. And uh, quarterback sack and a fumble at the uh, Troy 32-yard line with about a minute and a half to go. You stop that, and you stop the drive and finish the game. But Troy, man, I just thought defensively, speed, hard-hitting, physical, they've got it all on defense. Yeah, and they, yeah, just, they smother just smother you. you. Uh, uh, you texted me yesterday afternoon and said, boy, you know, UTSA is a, just a, a very uh, clutch team that, that makes plays when they have to make plays. And you've now seen that two years in a row. Their record, I don't have it in front of me, but their their fourth quarter, their games, the games they play, about 75% of them are a one-score game in the fourth quarter. And then, like, in the last six minutes, uh, when they're behind or tied, I mean, they win practically every time. And that has certainly happened uh, in our meetings within the last two years. Uh, they beat us 52-46 to 46 in Bowling Green. WK had a first and goal at the eight with under a minute to go and didn't score. And then in the championship game, lost 49-41 uh, as uh, the Roadrunners intercepted a pass in the end zone. It was a Hail Mary, but nonetheless a chance to tie it there. And, and then this year, you know, WK has the ball and they're driving and, and, um, and uh, they, they couldn't convert on a fourth and two at the UTSA 34 with about uh, you know two minutes to go, San Antonio gets it back, and they were able to, on a, on a review play, on a fourth down and one and a half, they went for it. They had to review to see if they made it. It was the right call. They made it by about six inches, and then they ran the clock out. But they've been clutch, and, you know, and they just don't lose close games. You know, they in, the, um, in their last game of the season, uh, in order to get to the championship game, they wanted to tip pass in the end zone. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, they, UAB beats them. But the ball was tipped, and they grabbed it in the end zone for a touchdown game over. So, great players, but uh, they know how to win at the end. Yeah, they, yeah, do, they do, and they've, and they've had a, a couple of great years back-to-back right now. Um, you know, here here we are sitting in Murfreesboro and thinking, oh, my gosh, great news. Bailey Zappi has graduated, and all of a sudden, there's another, there's another transfer, transfer quarterback, quarterback in Bowling, in Bowling Green. Green. Well, Austin Reed's good. You know, Bailey Zappi's probably a once-in-a-generation kind of player, and he had a Pretty fair debut as a starter yesterday with New England, going 17 for 21 in their uh, in their win um, against Detroit. He was even so good, uh, Chip. They he shut out Detroit. They didn't even score a point too. So that's how good Bailey is. I know it's but, amazing. Uh, you know, Austin uh, <laughs> Austin Reed is a good, a really good player. You know, when he arrived here on campus, not many people knew about him. He transferred from a Division II school. Quite frankly, everyone just assumed that the transfer quarterback from West Virginia University was going to be the starter, Jarrett Deggie, who came here to the Hill, leading all of college football among current quarterbacks in yards and touchdown passes, but uh, Reed beat him out. And, um, you know, we certainly haven't lost any of the games because of Austin Reed. He's in the top five or six or even higher than that in most statistics. A little different than Deggie. He's more of a runner, a bigger uh, 
Uh, I'm, just, I'm a little bit different. I'm sorry than Zappy, bigger than Zappy, um, better runner than Zappy. Not you know Bailey was once in a generation player, and you know Austin certainly is, is very special. Throws a good deep ball, even though the last two games, uh, I think defense has caught on to that, and he hasn't aired it out downfield as much as he did earlier in the year. But he's got a big arm, and he is um, a very demonstrative and. Um, energetic and also I would say emotional quarterback maybe more than any quarterback I've been around he really shows his emotions and 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 most quarterbacks are sort of calm cool and collective I would not call him calm and cool he's an emotional guy like a linebacker maybe playing quarterback yeah Yeah. Um, Um, speaking of of Zappy Zappy. a couple of weeks ago of course we retired Kevin Byard's jersey here and he has been such a source of, of pride for folks in the middle community and I would imagine that uh, what what uh, Bailey has has done here in a very short amount of time has been the same kind of thing for the folks in the Hilltopper Nation. Yeah, but unlike Byron, you know, Bailey was only here for a year, but people are certainly prideful of what he's been able to accomplish. I, I tend to think maybe our longtime NFL guy from recent years, much like you know Byard, would be Jack Doyle. Yes, you know, Jack was here and played four years and played the NFL for. Nine years, I believe. Uh, you know, it just proves, Chip, you know, there's been a bunch of Blue Raiders in the NFL and a bunch of Hilltoppers in the NFL. And I think we've got about a handful, you know, still yep, playing. Yep. And, and uh, you know, Mike White did well when he got a chance to play for the Jets. And, and you guys have had you know, the same situations. But it is very prideful for schools like us who, when we have a player, jump out and, and, and certainly um, – People know about them, and you know, Byard, what a great player, one of the all-time great Titans, and it, it just uh, it, it's special for us because we had a good opportunity to be around them and know them and know how cool of people they were outside of outside of players. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I know you've got a show to get ready for. We appreciate you taking time tonight, and I'll have your special parking place ready on Saturday. Saturday. I look forward to that, and uh, you know, it's hard to stay slim this time of year eating this uh, this coaching show food. I've got. Uh, Corn dogs. I did go with a half salad tonight, but I had to get a couple corn dogs. I'm going with uh, the, uh, the uh, blackened, blackened uh, fish uh, tacos, and that's going to be it tonight. So there you go. There you, go. You, you got me beat tonight. Uh, all right. All right. Thank, you, thank you, Randy. Appreciate, Randy. appreciate it. Thank you. See you Saturday. All right. All right. Randy Lee, the voice of the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, will take a timeout. And more with Coach Rick Stockstill after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. It's red. With heated seats. Serious air conditioning. And that uh, little compartment thingy, you know, where you put your sunglasses? You found the perfect car. Now get the perfect loan with Ascend. We've got low rates, flexible terms, and you can apply online at Ascend.org or at any of our branch locations. I'm going to name her Betty. Auto loans from Ascend Federal Credit Union. Banking without the bank. Ascend is federally insured by NCUA. All loans are subject to credit approval. Put Lee Company on your team and you'll always be ahead of the game with home maintenance, improvements, and repair. Sign up for a Lee Company home maintenance plan to have your heating and air conditioning system tuned up twice a year. In addition, you'll receive a comprehensive electrical and plumbing home inspection, plus member-only discounts and priority service, all for as low as $8.25 a month. For the very best electrical, heating, air conditioning, and plumbing services, call Lee Company at 615-867-1000 or visit LeeCompany.com. Hey, Blue Raider fans, this is Dr. Mark Hardison with Middle Tennessee Oral and Implant Surgery. We are so proud to be able to serve the Blue Raider teams and their families when they need wisdom teeth removed, dental implants, or other specialty oral care. Our mission is to provide health care as it should be, providing compassion, availability, and excellence to every one of our patients. We deeply appreciate the support of your business as we join in supporting our team. Let's go Blue! It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. 
Hey, Blue Raider fans, Chip Walters here. Lightning's Locker Room, powered by textbook brokers, is the place to get your Blue Raider gear. Open Monday through Friday from 8 to 6 and Saturdays from 10 to 4. Lightning's Locker Room is just across the street from Floyd Stadium at 1321 Greenland Drive. It has all the MT polos, hoodies, T-shirts, hats, and all the other game day gear you'll ever need. See the selection online at mtsugear.com or at Gate 2A on game days. Lightning's Locker Room, the official game day provider, powered by textbook brokers. Another season of women's and men's college Last sports is underway. Chip. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. News Radio WGNS, the flagship station for Blue Raider sports. Welcome back into the Boulevard here on the corner of Middle Tennessee Boulevard in East Main. And it is always hopping in here, and it will be hopping in this corner on Saturday when the homecoming parade comes down uh, East Main and makes the turn here at Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Bud Light proudly welcomes back Middle Tennessee fans to Floyd Stadium this year. Bud Light is for the fans. And, Coach, there were some topics in, in college football that wanted to, to bring up, kind of get your, your thoughts on. One of the things you mentioned just a little bit was uh, you talked about the percentages and numbers. Uh, I was watching a replay of the Miami-North Carolina game from this past weekend, and the announcers mentioned uh, Sparky Woods and the former head coach at South Carolina and and elsewhere, and said that he carries the metrics book for Coach Brown. Uh, is there somebody that carries the uh, the the book of percentages or, or all of that? How do y'all handle that? Yeah, and I, I don't know if North Carolina, if he's talking about the analytical Correct. Uh, deal that, yeah, uh, Riley Larkin, uh, one of our, uh, our offensive uh, – quality control guy uh does a really good job with it throughout the week and you know we talk about it go over everything and you know he keeps me posted on stuff during the course of the game now, is he on headset as well or does he have to come up and physically say hey coach you know in this position now, he, he's on a headset that can he can hear but he can't talk okay so uh he has to come up and physically uh, tell you what, what are the situations in games where you look to use the analytics all the fourth down stuff all of that yeah it's uh you know you, you're like, you, you, they they do it it's a week by week deal of whoever you're playing if you're playing you know as a heavy underdog they're gonna tell you that you should go forward on fourth down you know a lot more than if you're a heavy favorite you know so um you know, at all different field zones, they, by the quarter, by the time left in the game, by the time, you know, you know, it, it does uh, two-point plays, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's timeouts. It's uh, very in-depth. And, uh, you know, so it's uh, – but mostly the fourth down situations is what it, you know – is involved with yeah the uh used to back in the old days we didn't hear about analytics we just heard the sheet you know and, and uh, whether you went for one or went for two we said well that's what the sheet said yeah and uh, you still have that you you still have that because have you been in it long enough to where you have it memorized no, no, no. <laughs> uh, you know but you know you still and it's still all that is still a recommendation it's not you know you go back to you know, Lane Kiffin last year, I think it was when they played Alabama, you know, they came in as heavy underdogs and, you know, they went forward a bunch, you know, on, on the minus side of the field on fourth down and, and didn't get it, you know. And after the game, you know, he said that you live by analytics, you die by analytics. And, uh, you know, so some, some people are, you know, 100% in it. Whatever that book says they're going to do. Uh, had had – Somebody asked me to, and, and I want to make sure I 
phrase it right is is because this day and age of, of football, we see so much of guys, uh, especially in the secondary, running into receivers and you don't see as much wrap up and, and everybody's trying to strip the ball. Has the way you taught defense changed over the years in, in, in tackling, especially well, in the sec- especially with defensive backs? I think the big thing just is, is get, you've gotten your head out of the game, get head out of the tackle. You know, that's the biggest thing on, on defense and even offensively in football in general that, you know, keep your head out of the, out of the tackle. And, uh, you know, they talk about the gator roll now and how to tackle and everything. But the big thing is just the safety part of it that you, you keep your head out of the, game, out of the tackle. And, you know, it, it's so fast now. And, a, a si- you know, I may be aiming for his, you know, midsection. But, you know, he dips and now, uh, you know, he, he lowers his head. And, you know, there's that possibility because the game is so fast. But, you know, the big thing is just trying to keep, you know, your defenders, uh, people that make tackles, people that make blocks, you try to keep, make sure they're cognizant that uh, they keep their head out of the play. Well, after yesterday, the gator roll that you mentioned is now roughing the passer, especially against Tampa Bay. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> I, I know it's a big deal and all that. I saw it a minute ago up here, but, uh, you know, the NFL is going to protect the quarterback, you know, and uh, – it's uh, it's hard to play. I've always said it's hard to play defensive back in the NFL because you can't touch those guys, and you know rushing the passer, it, it's hard. But you know, uh, you know the I think the Titans got a rough in the passer or something like that because they hit the guy in the stomach. But you know they're going to protect the quarterbacks. Yep, sure are. Uh, they didn't have BB blocking for. Him. They had BB blocking for him. They you were totally protected. They wouldn't need. They wouldn't need all those calls. <laughs> that sucker could protect you now. It, he he was. Uh, was he your backside guy? Backside, front, front side, everything. He, he took good care of me. Yeah, absolutely, and still does. Now they're my left knee, <laughs> and still does. Uh, last week, the in, the Division One Council of the NCAA uh, passed. Uh, a provision that would move on to the board of directors that would potentially allow college basketball to play exhibition games in the summer, whether they were single games or in a three-game multi-team event. Over the years, there has been whispers of, boy, wouldn't it be nice if, you know, schools could play a game at the end of spring practice or whatever. Do you see that ever as a legitimate possibility or – do you guys need that time to heal up? If it's my choice, I'll never, ever play somebody else in the spring. Right. Because why would you do that? Why would we go play? Who do you want to go play? You want to go play? Kentucky. Kentucky. Why yeah. would you go play Kentucky? Now you give them an opportunity to evaluate every one of your players and say, hey, Johnny, why don't you get in the transfer portal? Tommy, why don't you get in the transfer portal? You know, and all that. So all you're doing is advertising your players for them to go steal them from you. So I think it's it would be crazy. I don't see any benefit for especially group of five guys. I don't see any benefit that you get playing somebody else. Would you what, have had the same answer five years ago? If five years ago, I'd have said – what good are you going to get out of it? You're right. going to risk injury and all that kind of stuff. And so I, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of it. Okay. Well, there you go. Interesting answer to good question there. All right. We'll take a timeout, be back to uh, take a look ahead and get some final comments from Coach after this. You're listening to the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Make a comeback after joint and back pain and get back to what you love with help from Ascension St. Thomas Joint Replacement Institute and Ascension St. Thomas Spine Institute. Our experienced care teams offer the latest technology to help shorten recovery, including minimally invasive options and robotic surgery. And to make getting care easier, we connect the dots for you, helping you navigate everything from imaging and lab services to pharmacy and physical therapy. Details about appointment scheduling can be found at ascension.org slash St. Thomas Joint and Spine. 
This is Coach Stockstill, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about the litter problem on our roadways. The Tennessee Department of Transportation spends $19 million every year just to pick up litter. There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter. Remind others not to, and report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're all on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com. With a Kroger Plus card, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. And for every dollar you spend, you earn fuel points, which can add up to $1 per gallon off at the pump for the win. Plus, save every day on groceries and get personalized digital coupons for the win. The Kroger Plus card. All you do is win. Big, big savings. Sign up now at Kroger.com and start saving. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Fuel restrictions apply. It's never lost on Window Last World commercial break your here, is your largest physical investment. Window World's integrity will be noticed from your very first moment of contact. The clean, professional installation of premium windows, siding, doors, and more are designed to last while leaving your home looking amazing. Window World and their lifetime warranty will always be there when it really matters. They're America's most trusted remodeler and proud partner of Middle Tennessee Athletics because the difference is integrity and always in the details. You are listening to NTSU Sports on WGNS. Welcome back for a final time to the Boulevard here in Murfreesboro. In in addition to the football game on Saturday, on Friday night, we'll have the induction into the Blue Raider Hall of Fame. It's free, open to the public. We invite everybody to come out at 6 o'clock. These are the six that will be going in this year. Volleyball standout, Leslie Clark Vance. Women's basketball standout, Crystal Horton, a hometowner. Kevin Kanaski, the all-time leading assist man for Blue Raider basketball. Sandy Neal, first scholarship athlete, uh, female athlete at middle, and she goes in on the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Baseball slugger Brian Peck and uh, great Blue Raider linebacker Don Thomas out of Lincoln County. Uh, Coach, you've got a really good Western Kentucky team that puts up a lot of yards, a lot of points. Keys to this one. Uh, the big thing is, too, we got to tackle in space. They're going to throw a ton of screens, fast screens out there to the receivers. They got some really dynamic receivers, so we got to do a, re- a great job of tackling in space. Uh, they're going to throw them. You'll get tired of watching them. They're going to throw it so much. And uh, so we got to tackle well in space and then, you know, keep the ball in front of us. We got to do a better job of keep doing that, not give up the explosive plays. You know, last year we turned the ball over a bunch and uh, against them. You know, so we got to protect the ball. And then, you know, we've got to, you know, form, you know, some consistency on offense, uh, not necessarily running the ball, throwing the ball. we just got to be more consistent and make plays uh, than we have here the last two weeks. Yeah, and you, you, you've had your moments running the football, and, 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 and you've got to make them respect that. Uh, you've got to be able to do it good enough for that. Well, the only way you, they're going to respect it is if you can uh, you can score points. And uh, if you're not scoring, then, you know, it's going to be a one-dimensional game and they're not going to respect it. Coach, good luck. Appreciate you, my man. All right, Coach Rick Stockstill tonight. Don't forget, no show next week, but the Blue Raider Network goes on the air Saturday at 1 p.m., kickoff at 2.30, the 100-mile rivalry, Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky, and it's all right here on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Good night from the Boulevard.